Hey squids, Michelle here to do some map analysis. We'll be taking a look at common strategies and creative routes for each map. So let's start this video series off with the simplest and most neutral stage, Walleye Warehouse. The significance of certain routes changes with each differing mode, so we will tackle each mode chronologically. As I mentioned, Walleye Warehouse is the most basic of stages. It's a perfect level to start off with, so let's begin with its layout. The stage is symmetrical, providing us with three main routes to get to the center on either spawn point. The critical points of the level being mid-center, mid-left, and mid-right. In those areas, we find what we will call the U-Tower and a set of crates on either side. Turf War utilizes all routes, since they all provide a surface to ink. Therefore, covering each area is important, so you'll want to split up and have a teammate cover each path before taking the center. For those that go to the center to reach the top of the U-Tower, it takes about an average of 10.2 seconds to swim to it, and is a great vantage point that allows you to see all surroundings. But standing on it can make you vulnerable to a charger or to a flank, so a good way to maintain a high ground while becoming less of a target is to access the crates by squid jumping. This is also useful for checking each corridor for enemies before returning to the U-Tower. Gaining and maintaining key positions is much more important in ranked mode, with the inclusion of splat zones and tower mode. Walleye Warehouse has three main zones that a team must hold down to be successful in splat zones. These of course are mid-center, which is where the splat zone is located, mid-left, and mid-right, which are the flank points. You'll need to have your teammates spread out across these main areas. Generally, a good strat is to have two inklings take center and one inkling on each side. If you hold down mid-right, for example, it will give you perfect sight lines to opponents heading towards the center while remaining hidden for a time due to the blind spot that the container creates. Traveling there takes about 13 seconds. Do recall that if the opponent goes directly to mid-center, he or she will see past the container at about 10.5 seconds, leaving a small window of 2.5 seconds. If the opponent makes sure to check their surroundings before becoming fixated on the center, you will be spotted, so be ready to engage. Tower mode has a slight tweak to the map, with the inclusion of the platforms on mid-left and mid-right, which changes the key positions a bit. Now having an inkling traveling near the opponent's spawn to flank becomes a critical strat. The platform takes 12.5 seconds to swim to, but it can be defended quicker than that with multiple routes. It takes 11 seconds from the top route, 11 seconds from the bottom route on the right of the container, and 10 seconds from the left of the container. The moving tower also opens up access to the container on the opposing side. One member of your team can gain access to the container to take out opponents trying to wipe out your team on the tower. It is possible to use this as a push to gain more distance with the tower. There are also good sub-weapons that can apply pressure on this stage. The splash ball can cut off opponents approaching the left crates and be forced to retreat and approach from a different route, shoot at it, or wait for the splash ball to end. But time is turf. Sprinklers can be placed on the top of the U-Tower to apply pressure to those approaching the tower or to maintain ink on the splat zone. The Seeker provides a quick and easy method of travel and defense through the narrow pathways on the sides. Specials like the Killer Whale can be used on the top of the U-Tower to cover the container and force charges off while also pressuring the opponent's spawn point. But speaking of spawn points, the stage's basic structure does allow for a ruthless spawn trap that can frustrate you into an ugly octoling. Due to one exit outside of the spawn point, you are forced to engage right off the bat. Recall that, although you can get spawn trapped, you may also spawn trap the opponent, so always be prepared for this scenario. Alright, that's all for today, Squidos. Hope you enjoyed a look into Walleye Warehouse, and look forward to more creative approaches as we take a look through more complicated maps.